What's up guys, Iceman here. So there's been some new information on the recent bear attack in Banff National Park. And this stuff is really freaking me out because my wife and I were planning on potentially giving that place a visit one day, but I'm kind of having second thoughts at this point. So the bear that attacked this couple was actually a 25 year old sow so a female grizzly and she didn't even have any cubs with her it was found that she was malnourished which could have been due to the fact that berries for whatever reason were in slow production this year and this sow grizzly's teeth were all messed up they weren't quite to the level of health that you would expect from a bear who's able to forge for itself well and take care of itself but first off, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support on this channel. Guys and gals, that is. And if you will, like this video, subscribe to the page, and pull that bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And blessings to my channel members and patrons. Links in the description below. So, this couple that was recently attacked and killed by this female grizzly bear were both 62 years old and apparently they were very well experienced in hiking even in this specific area where the attack happened they've traveled and hiked through this area many times throughout the past and the area in particular in which they were found mutilated in was known as red deer valley which is a very secluded area out in Banff National Park. And of course, as many of you guys know, they had their sweet border collie with them, who was seven years old. And it's kind of unknown as to what sort of interaction this dog had with the bear. But my guess is the dog was inside the tent with the couple. And it seems that this bear was just really hungry and decided to conduct this predatory attack. But that's just my speculation so far from what I've read on this incident. So Doug and Jenny were very experienced hikers and they got their sacks ready before this potentially one week long adventure. They packed all sorts of supplies, their tent, their food, proper gear. They even packed bear spray on this endeavor as they always do. So they make their way out to Banff, they park their car, and they start walking down the trailheads, heading toward their destination, Red Deer Valley. But unfortunately, according to all the articles I've read on this incident, they did not have a boomstick with them at the time, which is almost one of my reservations as to why I don't know if I want to go there. I don't think I can carry my boomstick across the border. And of course, I'm going to follow all the laws, so that would mean I'm going to have to buy this sort of Canada regulated bear spray or whatever and only have that at my disposal. But nonetheless, of course, bear attacks in this area are extremely rare. And to my understanding, this is the first one in the area in over a decade, a fatal one anyway. But of course, the dangers are always there. And what's really unusual again about this attack is that it was a female sow. From most bear attacks that I've covered on this channel so far, it's usually a male Bruin that conducts an attack, especially a predatory one. Aside from that, you'll occasionally see sows attack alone, but not often. And in most cases, a sow will attack while trying to protect her cubs. So it just seems that, especially from this episode, and this incident that I'm covering, you can never be too safe or too trustworthy. No matter what kind of bear it is, male or female or age, you just have to treat them with respect and caution, which I know is what this couple did. But unfortunately, as fate had it, it just didn't go their way. Apparently every night when it started to get dark, Doug and Jenny would put up their tent and they'd take out their little e-tablets and sit there and read their books before they went to bed. So I could just imagine this little tent out in some secluded region with these little glowing things in them. Now, I know that they would put their food up in a tree, so they were very careful in that regard. But I wonder how a bear would process it to see this little tent with glowy things in it. 
I can't help but wonder if that would potentially attract their interest. Doug and Jenny were a very close-knit couple. They have known each other since college and really enjoyed their lives together. They were very adventurous and outdoorsy. They would hike often and they lived great lives. It kind of reminds me of my wife and I because we really enjoy nature and going out and about in the wilderness, but I do try to exercise caution every time I do such things. So basically the night of this attack, Doug and Jenny did their usual. They played fetch with their dog a little bit. It started getting dark out. They put up their tent. They all three got inside the tent. They took off their shoes and boots and they began reading their e-tablets. But then the eerie part is that around 8 p.m. at night, one of the two adults used their little handheld Garmin device and they sent out an SOS. They managed to spell this out, bear attack, bad. So Garmin received this message around 8 p.m. and right away they started sending out alerts to the authorities to conduct a search and rescue party. And that's exactly what they did. But unfortunately, the weather was so bad that they couldn't take a helicopter into this secluded region of the woods. So the search party had to walk it. And it was estimated that it would take them between four and five hours to get there. So the search party starts getting closer to the scene and they have their spotlights and flashlights and they're looking all over the place for any sign of life. But of course, during this encounter, a very eerie sensation encompasses them, and the group's concerns grow more and more stronger as they approach this area. And then, out in the distance, they see the food cache up in a tree. So, at this point, they knew that they were close. And they noticed the brush all beaten up, as if something came barreling on through it over and over again and they looked at the ground and it looked as though a rotor tiller just dug into it and dug into it then it was at that point where they heard something out in the distance and surely enough they look out to the right right between the trees and they see these eyes glowing back at them and this bear was acting extremely brazen especially toward a group of multiple adults so the bear comes charging around them and a bluff charges them a few times and instantly they know that this must be the bear that the signal was sent in regards to. So the group was able to shoot this bear and kill it on sight, fortunately. But then they started walking toward where the bear was and they noticed Doug and Jenny's tent just flattened out and parts of it were shredded up. And they used their flashlights and they looked around on the ground and they saw that the two adults must have exited the tent without even their shoes on. So something really disturbed them throughout the night. And from the tent, you could still see the two tablets glowing through the thin layer of sidewall. But these footprints were all over the place. And then they started following them and they noticed paw prints as well from their dog. And that's when they found the body of their seven-year-old Border Collie, just mangled not far from the tent. And they noticed pepper spray all over the scene, and they picked up the can and found that it was empty. And not far from where the can lay, they found the bodies of Doug and Jenny. So all three of them, Doug, Jenny, and their dog, were found not far away from the tent, and they were all dead on scene. So it's just crazy how this whole thing unfolded. It's almost as though the bear attacked them with intent of potentially having them to eat, but then it maybe almost thought better of it. But it still stayed in the area, knowing that maybe it should still take advantage of the situation. But perhaps in addition to that, maybe knowing that it did something really unusual, or maybe knowing that it did something wrong. From what I've seen so far throughout my research on bear attacks on this channel, is that bears that attack other people often act very strange during and after the attack. So it's like it's in their inner psyche that there's something really weird, unusual, or even risky when it comes to attacking humans. And I wonder if this sow grizzly possessed that sort of 
inkling during this whole interaction. But nonetheless, this was an absolutely horrific bear attack. And it really helps put some things into perspective. And it makes me, to some extent, want to take advantage of today and be grateful for today. Because Doug and Jenny, I'm sure, had it in their minds that they were going to do this many more times before their days were over. But then and there, when they were just doing what they always do, just sitting there in their tent, maybe talking amongst themselves a little bit, reading whatever on their tablets as they always do, that was the last day they would spend together on this earth. So with that being said, I do encourage you all to try to consider your life and what you have because it can be very easy to take things for granted and you never quite know when you're going to go. But let me know in the comments what you think about this attack and what do you think you take for granted in your life? And has this attack helped bring some perspective for you? Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to go out to Banff. It's just kind of concerning to me to go into a Canadian forest and not being able to carry my boomstick. I just don't know if I want to subject myself to that, so I might stick to the ones in the United States. But I guess time will tell and I'll keep you all updated as to what I do. But again, I do appreciate you all for your support. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. And I'll talk to you all soon with more chilling tales from the Iceman.